In this lecture, we will talk about this important theorem. Uh, this is called the fundamental theorem of finite cyclic groups. And one of the things that you have to pay attention when you read math uh, literature is that whenever you see the word fundamental, it usually means that it's a very important uh, fact or theorem. So this has to do with the finite cyclic groups. So one part of this theorem was already proven in the last video lecture. So let's look at what the statement says. So suppose we have a group and we have an element in that group so that that element has order n. Uh, the first part we proved already and it was this. If you have a subgroup of a cyclic group, then the subgroup itself is cyclic. That is the previous theorem, the one we proved in the previous lecture. Uh, the the more two, two more parts of this theorem, which I'm not going to prove. Uh, for the same reasons, I'm not proving some other theorems. It's because they are long and a little bit tedious. So I prefer not to do them in the lectures. All right. The second part is the following. If you have a subgroup H of this cyclic group, then the number of elements in that subgroup divides n when n is this number of elements here. Now remember n is the order of the element a and that is exactly the same as the number of elements in this in this group in this cyclic group. So if you have a subgroup of a cyclic group the order or the number of elements in that group divides the number of elements in that subgroup. That restricts the possibilities for subgroups of a group. They have to, the orders have to be divisors of the order of the larger group. And the third part, and this is probably the one uh, that we're gonna emphasize most more here is this. Uh, we have to talked about subgroups, but we haven't talked about how do you find subgroups of a group, all the subgroups. And this third part is the one that talks about that fact. So let's say, let's look at the statement. So if K is a positive divisor of N, and remember is the order of this collection, this subgroup, then this one, this subgroup has exactly one subgroup of that order, of order K. And that subgroup is, is this, is A to the N, when N is the order of the element A, divided by K. This n divided by k here is going to be an integer. It's going to be a natural number because k divides n. Now, if you're confused about what this says, so let me write down a remark here, a remark where what that, that third part says. So the third part, third part of this fundamental theorem of finite cyclic groups is basically saying that for every divisor that you have of the order of the group, you're going to have a subgroup of that order and they exactly tell you how you find that subgroup. So this is actually, this third part tells you how to find the subgroups of a cyclic group by looking at the divisors. So again, I'm not going to do the proof. I'm going to explain uh, what this means and we go into a couple of examples. So let's look at the remark here. So by this theorem, part three, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence. What that means is for every divisor, there is a subgroup of a cyclic group. If for every subgroup, there is a divisor. So there are one-to-one -one correspondence. Divisors and subgroups. So what we mean by that is something like this. So if we have a divisor of the order of the group, if the group is cyclic, then there is a subgroup that corresponds to the divisor, and that subgroup is this, a to the n divided by k with this Exponent here is going to be a natural number. Every divisor has a subgroup and every subgroup has a divisor. There's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the two of them. So basically what this is saying is if you want to find all the subgroups of a cyclic group, you only have to look at the divisors of the number of elements in that group. And that will give you all the subgroups. So let's look at an example and see how that works. So let's look at this. Uh, we have, suppose we have a group and we suppose we also have an element. So that element has order 24. Again, this is an example. So I'm choosing this arbitrarily. I could choose, like, for example, 40 or 50. Uh, the reasoning will be the same. So let's assume that we have an, older, an element of order 24 in some group. 
what we want to do is we want to find all the subgroups of this group here that is generated by the element A. So this is a cyclic uh, group generated by A of order 24. Now, because of this remark that I made here, this one, the subgroups of this types of groups, cyclics, correspond to the divisors of n when n is the order or the number of elements in that group. So let's look at that. So the divisors of this, of the order here, which is 24, and why is that 24? Because the order of A is 24. The order of A corresponds to the number of elements in the subgroup generated by A, which is the same thing here, 24. So the divisors of that corresponding to these subgroups. So we just have to look at the divisors of 24. Now the divisors of 24, if you start looking at how they, the divisors of 24 are, these are all the divisors here. The divisors of 24 are one, you always, all of them, including the one and itself. So it's one, two, three, four, six, eight, 12, and 24. And you can go ahead and double check that this is all of them. This is all the divisors of 24. So in our case, n will be 24. That's the number of elements in our cyclic group or the order of A, which is the same. And these are going to be the values of k, the possible divisors of 24. So for every divisor, we're going to get a subgroup. So let's see that. So let's start with the divisor 1. So for k equals to 1. For that divisor, we're going to have a subgroup. According to the theorem, it's going to be a to the n divided by k. n in this case is 24, k is 1. So it's going to be a to the 24. Now, but recall that a to the 24 will have to give us the identity. That is because a has order 24. So this is the same as the group generated by the identity, which is only one, uh, one element. So the divisor 1 gives us a subgroup, one of the trivial subgroups of the group generated by a. Now, so, and then we continue, continue through this list and we do exactly the same for each one of them. So for k equals 2, we do the same thing. This is the divisor of 24. So the subgroup that it generates is going to be a to the 24. This is n divided by k. k here is 2. So it's going to be the one generated by a to the 12. That is not going to be the identity, but you can start taking powers of this and see what is this group, the subgroup. So the subgroup generated by any element will always contain the identity and powers of a to the 12. So a to the 12 to the first power will be this one. If you take a to the 12 to the second power, you already have a to the 24, which is the identity, so we can stop there. So it only has two elements. For k equals to 3, the same, the same story. It's going to be a to the n divided by k. n is 24, k is 3, so it's going to be 24 divided by 3 is 8. So it's the subgroup generated by a to the 8. And again, start taking powers of a to the 8. Always the identity is there. First power of a to the 8. Second power is a to the 16. And you, when you take the third power, you get a to the 24, which is the identity again. So this is going to be all the list. And you continue doing the same thing for all the divisors. So you're going to do that for 4, uh, 6, 8, 12 and 24 and that will give you all the subgroups so, so let's do it for 4 a little bit quickly so for 4 for 6 here will be 8 to the 24 divided by 6 that's 8 to the 4 start taking powers of 8 to the 4 identity is always there first power of 8 to the 4 second power of 8 to the 4 is 8 to the 8 and so on you will get it to 8 to the 20th that's the fifth power of 8 to the 4 and if you take one more power, you will get a to the 24, which is again the identity. So that's why we stop here. Same thing for 8 and 12. Exactly the same, a to the 24 divided by 8. That will be the subgroup that corresponds to this divisor. 24 divided by 8 is 3. You start taking powers of a cube. And this is all the powers you get after 2, a to the 21st power. Remember, when you get to a to the 24, you get the identity again. So you don't have to start writing down again the same thing. For 12 is the same. Uh, 
device or 12 has a subgroup that corresponds to this one 24 divided by 12 here in the exponent that's a squared so we're going to take powers of a squared that would be the subgroup so it'll be the identity a squared and so on and we stop here at a to the 22nd power because if you go one more power it will be a to the 24 which gives me the identity and finally for the last divisor will be 24 is a divisor of 24, so it's a to the 24 divided by 24. This is n, this is k. So it's degenerated by, which is this here, is exactly the group, the cyclic group. We started with this one. So it's all the way from the identity to a to the 23rd power. Those are going to be all the subgroups of the group generated by a. So all the subgroups of, of this group, the one generated by the a, are going to be the one generated by the identity, the one generated by a to the 12, by a to the 8, by a to the 6, by a to the 4, a to the 3rd, a to the 2nd power, and then the group itself. Now, that's the list. Usually when you have this type of list to visualize how the groups are organized, we gonna do something that is called the lattice of the subgroup so let's do that so we got we're gonna organize these subgroups by inclusion what do we mean by that so we're gonna make a picture of how they organize starting from the largest one now if you look at all the subgroups that are here this is of course the largest one because it's, this is the original group so we're going to start there. So that's going to be the one on, at the top. So I'm going to just write it down here. So that's the one at the top. That's going to be A. That's the larger group. Now we look at the ones that are included in, in this one in the next level. So what will those be? That will be uh, this one. The one generated by a square, which is this list, is also included there. So I'm going to put it in here. So that's going to be indicated by, an, by a straight line. So the straight line is going to indicate that this subgroup right here is included in this one. So every time the line goes down, that means this one is included in the one that is above. So a square. The one generated by a squared is included in a, of course, because it's a subgroup of that. Now, let's continue with the next one. So, the next one will be, this is the one we did, a squared, the one generated by a squared. Let's do the a cube. Now, if you look at the one generated by a cube, this one is not included here, of course, right? So, you have a cube here, but a cube is not there. So, that's not included in this one, but it is included in the larger one, in the one generated by A. So I'm going to put another uh, vertical line or horizontal um, diagonal line here indicating that A cube, the one generated by A cube, is included in this one. So we did this one and this one. Let's keep going through the list. Now, why did I do uh, this on this side and this one on, on this other side? There is no particular reason to it. The reason is just because it looks better to put it symmetric. That's all. So let's look at the other ones. So we did a square. We did this one a cube. Let's see a to the fourth the one generated by a to the 4. So these are the powers of a to the 4. And if you look at this list that is here, the powers of a to the 4, those powers are actually included in these powers, in the powers of a squared. Because if you have powers of a squared, then inside here you can have the powers of a to the 4, of course. So all these elements that are here, the ones that are generated by a to the 4, are included in a square so I'm gonna put another diagonal line that indicates that a to the 4 is included in there so let me put another line here so that's gonna be a to the 4 here so this subgroup is included in this one okay. 
Now let's see what else do we have. So let's go a to the fourth is already done. Let's look at a to the sixth power. Now a to the sixth power here, this one. This is actually included in in a square. The six powers of a are all included here. So a to the six is here and so on. But they are also included in the powers of a cube. So a to the six, the subgroup generated by a to the six, is included in both a square and a cube. So we're gonna draw that here to indicate that uh, relationship. So I'm gonna draw it here so it looks all uh, symmetric. It's gonna be a to the six. A to the six is a subset of a cube and is also a subset of a square. All right, so we continue like that. So we have done uh, all of this uh, so far. Let's keep going here. Uh, let's keep going to the list. So let's see a. So here let's look at a to the eight. So what is a to the eight here? Um, this is included in a square, but it's not included, uh, and it's also included in a to the four but not a to the six. It's not included in a cube, it's included here. So we just need to indicate that it's included in a to the four because this is the lower part here. So this is gonna be included to, this is gonna be a, uh, it's not an arrow, it's just a line. So a to the eight power, is included in a to the four, and that will also mean that a to the eight is included in a square. Now, a to the eight is not included in anyone else but this one and this one. So that would be all we have to do for this one. Now, what else do we have? Let's look at uh, a to the 12. Now, if you look at a to the 12, this is just the identity in a to the 12. This a to the 12, it's not included in a to the eight, but it's included here in a to the six. And is also included in a to the four. If you look at this list here, a to the, in the next one here, there will be a to the 12. So it's included in both, a to the 12 is included in both a to the four and a to the six. a to the four and a to the six. So let's indicate that in the picture. So in the picture, this will be, let's put the a to the 12 here, and that is a subgroup of this one and this one. Now there's only one subgroup left that I need to draw here, and is the last one. Let's go all the way back here, a to the 12, and is the one that is just generated by the identity here. That would be at the very bottom of that uh, picture. So that would be here. So it'll be at the very bottom here. So let me draw it here. So let's say this is the identity and is subset of this one and this one. Now, this is supposed to be a little bit more symmetric than the one that I draw here. So you can see this is a picture that gives the relation of inclusion between all the subgroups of the subgroup generated by A. This is gonna, what we call the subgroup lattice. This is what we call the subgroup lattice of whatever the group is in this case. So that would be the group generated by A. Subgroup so lattices are just a way to visualize how subgroups are included in others. That's all that it is to it, basically. Um, Okay, so let's look at another example, a little bit more uh, with numbers. So in the, in the previous example, it was just a, a genetic element. Let's look at an actual uh, actual group. So let's see this example. So let's say find all the subgroups of Z20 with addition. Remember, Z20 is all the elements 0 through 19, or you can think about it as all possible remainders where you divide by 19. And the binary operation here is addition modulo 20. 
And so what we want to do is find all the subgroups of that group and draw the subgroup lattice. That's similar to the one we did in the previous example. Now, we can know, one thing that is important here is to be able to apply the theorem, you need to have that the group is cyclic. It does not apply if the group is not cyclic. So the theorem, the fundamental theorem of finite cyclic groups, as the name says, only applies for finite cyclic groups. So the group has to be finite and it has to be cyclic. Now, Z20 is cyclic. Yes, because we know that Z20 is generated, for example, by one. You start adding one and you get all the elements of Z20. So that group is cyclic. Because it is cyclic, we can apply the fundamental theorem of finite cyclic groups. Now, the order of the element A here has to be 20 because it's the number of elements of Z20. So the order of one is 20, and that's what we call our N. And we do exactly the same thing we did with the previous uh, examples. The subgroups of Z20, this, of this group right here, are in one to one correspondence with the divisors of 20. So I just have to look at the divisors of 20. So let's look at the divisors of 20, which are this list that you see here. So it's one, two, four, five, 10, and 20. You can check that this is all of the divisors of 20. So each divisor gives a subgroup of Z20 and vice versa. That's the point that they are in to one to one correspondence. So let's do the same thing that we did for the previous one. These are all gonna be all the values of K and for each value we'll have a subgroup. So for K equals one, we will have one to the 20 divided by one. I'm here using multiplicative notation, but remember that this binary operation is addition. So at some point I'm gonna use additive notation here. So that's gonna be one to the 20, but it's, what is one to the 20? Is one operated with itself 20 times, so it's one plus one plus one because the binary operation is addition. So that gives me 20, but 20 is zero modulo 20. So that's just the identity, similar to what we were doing before. For k equals two would be the generator to the n 20 divided by k, which is two, so one to the 10. One to the 10 will be 10 here, because remember this means take the expression here, the one, and operate with itself 10 times. So it's one plus one plus one, that gives you 10. And this group generated by 10 is zero and 10, because then 10 plus 10 will be 20, that's zero. Similar thing you do with four and five. So for four will be one to the 20 over four. So one to the fifth, the one generated by five. So just uh, add five modulo 20, and this is the list that you get. Zero, five, 10, 15. The next one will be 20, which is again zero. Five, so one, but the device of five will be, the subgroup will be one to the 20 divided by five is one to the four, if you do the division. So this is four, same as before, and you start adding four, modulo 20, and so if you do that, then you get this list here, zero, four, eight, 12, 16. For 10 is the same thing, and for 20 is the same thing. So for 10, if you look at here, the details, you get the subgroup generated by two, looking at all this thing here, so that's adding two, modulo 20, you get up to 18, and for 20, you get one to the 20 over 20, that's the one generated by one, and this one is exactly our group. This is Z20. So we have all the subgroups of Z20, the ones that are marked with red. Now, if we wanna do the subgroup lattice, so I did it ahead of time. So the largest subgroup is the group itself, that's this one. The one generated by two is of course included in that. And the one generated by five is included in the big group, but this one is not included in two. So that's why we put it on another branch of the lattice. Now, the subgroup generated by four is included in the subgroup generated by two. If you think about it, uh, multiples of two contain multiples of four. Also, the one generated by 10, multiples of 10, multiples of five, contain the multiples of 10, and multiples of two contain the multiples of 10. So this one is included in both this subgroup and this one. And finally, for the trivial subgroup, the one generated by 
the identity that would be zero that would be included in this too, just to make it uh, symmetrical. All right, so that is the subgroup lattice for Z20. So the idea for all of this is for this theorem is that whenever you apply the theorem first, you need to make sure that the group is cyclic because it doesn't work for non-cyclic groups. And you always have to look at the divisors of the order of the cyclic group that will give you all the subgroups. Now, if you have a group that is not cyclic, finding the subgroups is a little bit more complicated. All right, so that is all I have to say for today. Um, take care and good luck.